type and she is taking this one head on, grabbing the bull by the horns and she really wants to help people through a difficult time. Um, so I'm really proud to see her starting this business with purpose and work towards helping people meet their life goals. Um, something that's actually very interesting that her and I have been trying to work on together is um, with my, my background in family law, I see people go through a really tough process and it's my job to think critically and be the rational one and take the emotion out of it, but they're coming to me with the emotion and I'm trying to sift through and navigate the legal, the, the, the legal side of things where I'll be able to work with her now and refer my clients to her um, to help her to help her clients work on navigating the emotional side of going through a difficult process and setting some personal goals for themselves in their divorce or in their custody battle or as they navigate dealing with child support. Um, so I'm really, really proud to see how she's been navigating um, making life coaching and hypnotherapy a facet of everyone's lives. So this is Paul Brown. Hey, I don't feel like I need to say anything. <laughs> I felt like that was it. That was good. Speech, speech. You're ready? <laughs> so um, Paula Brown with Purpose Coaching and Hypnotherapy. And more to come, I'm actually in um, holistic medicine school right now, working on my master's and doctoral uh, program. So uh, it's a little slow going because, well, my brain doesn't work as fast as it used to. Um, and I also had a really nice, I was very proud of my PowerPoint that I wanted to share you with y'all, um, but I will email it to you and then we'll just work off of that. Um, so again, I talked about what life coaching is, meeting you where you are and then identifying your goals or what may hold you back from those goals and, and really kind of digging in and helping people um, identify what they want to get out of it and knowing what to recognize when they get it. This is something that I, I think I'm going to be working harder on because I, I get people coming into me um, working towards a goal and then they get it and they're like, okay, I don't need to come anymore. I'm like, well then, good. you got to at least applaud yourself for, for making that transition. So one of the people that I like to read, uh, I know some of you might, I, think, I bet Bob knows who he is, Napoleon Hill. Um, so he's written many great books. And one of the things he says is, if you fail to control your own mind, you may be sure you will control nothing else. So a lot of people come in to me with very huge misconceptions of what hypnotherapy is. So I'm kind of here to, to dispel that for you. Um, this slide I actually did want to show you. So a lot of people don't realize here. <laughs> no, you know what, I'm gonna move. Oh, come, yeah, come stand by me, favorite Paula. The other Paula. So there are three um, consciousness to understand about the mind. A lot of people don't realize this. We're going through life. Consciousness is action within our awareness. So when you are conscious, you are acting within awareness. So this would be something like where you're focused on a new task, by the way. Um, the focus, maybe even just going to smell a flower, you intentionally do that. Um, and then you've got your subconscious, and these are actions and repetitive actions. Um, for instance, getting in a car, knowing where the pedal is. You don't even have to look, your body just does it. This is an unconscious um, level. And then you have your um, unconscious. These are past memories, memories that you may or may not remember, um, but they are affecting you. For instance, maybe the first time um, your parent reprimanded you or gave you praise. You may have no recognition of this, um, but it does still linger in there in unconscious memories. Um, and what's interesting is studies show um, that you can be primed subtly by cues um, to actually um, cause emotional and behavioral, <coughs> financial, political, all the ills that you can come up with. You can be programmed. Hypnosis is by choice. So when you are coming in and choosing hypnosis, 
It's not me putting a program in your subconscious. It's you making a decision how to control your subconscious, okay? Because we don't really have a whole lot of control over the subconscious. We don't even know what's happening. So did you know that 5% of our mind use is conscious? About five to 10%, depending on uh, what study you look at or, or what psychologist you're uh, talking to. Um, and then you've got 95, 90 to 95 is all below the surface, subconscious and unconscious. They say unconscious is about 5%. But the nice thing about it to blow your mind is you've got that 5% bubbling up to the subconscious. So something negative happened to your trauma it's bubbling up to the sub subconscious, and without your knowledge of it, it's affecting your conscious decisions. Sometimes we have fears and we don't do something. So, with that said, no, I don't, you guys don't need to see any rest. <laughs> oh, actually, this one is good. So, who is influencing your actions and your decisions? Think about that. Who is? This is one example um, in iMotions. It's a, uh, it's a study program. It's online. You can look it up. And they have this one little design. It's a milk carton with a cow on it and the label. So what they do is they hook up these sensors on these children to watch their eyes and where they're going. This is actually huge in marketing. Um, so what they've noticed is eyes are going to go here and here. So who do you think is going to use this information to manipulate or help you make a decision? Marketing. Exactly. Commercials, politicians, mm -hmm. they know where your eyes are going to go through these studies. So what's nice is you want to be able to be a little bit more in control of that. And so hypnosis, a lot of people, again, they think that, um, when, especially my friends, they think that they're going to come in and I'm going to make them club like chicken because <laughs> I do love chickens. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. That is trick hypnosis, and a lot of people ask me about that, um, or entertainment. It's not trick, it's entertainment. It is actually real, but when your eyes are closed and they're asking you to do an experiment, the hypnotist is actually looking for signs in the audience for people who are highly susceptible because that's going to aid to the entertainment when they bring them up on stage. Um, that's not something that I do. It's not something that I'm interested in. I take hypnosis extremely, I think it's very important. I take a lot of pride and uh, concern in my clients. Um, I monitor them while they're under. Sometimes I kind of go in there with them too, um, just to make sure everything is okay. Because it's very important. You're, you're working with somebody's mind. And you want to be um, uh, conscious of that and, and careful. So hypnosis is an effective way in working with the subconscious mind, taking control of what you want programmed in the subconscious for good habits or replacing bad habits. Um, I have a series this month that I'm doing um, for stop vaping and smoking. Um, I have two clients. Um, the second one is tonight, um, and they both say that they consider themselves, after one session, non-smokers. But I said, well, let's do one more, because they said, well, I still think about it. So let's kind of work on that. I, I recommend at least three sessions in hypnosis. Um, some hypnotherapists want you to buy 10 or 20. I don't think that's necessary. Hypnosis is fast. So we don't need to waste all that money. Um, does it work? I think it does if you're willing to make that change. If you come in and you're like, I don't think I want it, don't waste your money. I, I don't want that kind of money. Um, that's not gonna look good for you or for me. Um, somebody who is very wanting to change a certain thing, a habit, um, then, then that's good. I also am doing weight loss um, on Wednesday. Okay, so that's gonna be my series for this month. So, um, what is hypnosis good for? I'm kind of sold. I think it's good on everything, especially if 95% of our consciousness is unconscious or subconscious, that's where hypnosis comes in. So it's good for deprogramming, it's good for programming healthy habits, phobias, negative thinking, internal healing, that one's always kind of iffy for me to say because um, I don't I'm not a doctor yet <laughs> or a doctor um, but all dis-ease and that's how I like to call disease is dis-ease begins in the mind and a lot of people get very offended when I say that like 
I'm not choosing this. This is not something I would do to myself. But it does start in the mind. So sometimes if that's right, sometimes the body starts getting right. So I think that it's, um, I think it's very important. So I'd like to do a little demonstration if you're open to it. I'm not gonna hypnotize you, <laughs> but I'm gonna do a little guided meditation. I'm sorry, Mark, I'll get you later because <laughs> since you were videoing. Um, but if you're comfortable with it, um, if you could put your feet on the ground and hands uncrossed. I know it's weird, you wanna do that for comfort. Um, I want you to focus, a lot of times we don't breathe right. She knows that. Um, we're not breathing right. We're not breathing down in our abdomen and filling our lungs or pushing it all the way out. And this is vital to get all the oxygen to your, to your vital organs and things like that. So if you can, just close your eyes. And I want you to, you're going to take deep breaths in. You're going to fill the lungs and the abdomen. And you're going to hold it at the top of your breath for three seconds. And then you're going to let it out with a, I'm going to do this three times. And now if you're comfortable, I'll have you close your eyes. Focus on your breathing. With each exhalation, you are actually releasing toxins out of your body. So if your eyes are closed, I want you to imagine that your eyes are now blue, shut. And most of hypnosis is using your imagination, so this is good. Close your eyes and imagine that they are glued together. Or just comfortably really relaxed and you don't want to open them. With your eyes closed, just look up into the top of your forehead as if it were a screen. And as you do, notice how your eyes are becoming very heavy and relaxed, and they can't even open at all. Good, now your eyes are heavy and relaxed, and they won't open. And more comfortable and relaxed, they become, as each word I say, you become more and more relaxed. Imagine that your whole body just relaxing more and more with each word I speak. Imagine that a beautiful white light is bathing your whole body in healing light. You may even begin to feel that this warming feeling or a lightness. Now as you are relaxing all over in every way, I want you to focus on an area that may be causing you discomfort in your body. Take a moment and focus on an area that you would like more comfort. And now I want you to imagine the light is going to this area. It is giving it nurturing light is calming and soothing it, giving it love and healing. Imagine that this area is being bathed in healing, relaxing light, and that any discomfort you have in this area is just going away. Great, and now I'm going to count you back into this room. But before I do, I want you to know that this area, you are in control of it. You have the healing power. All of our bodies have this healing power. And when you open your eyes, you will feel happy, calm, relaxed, and positive about the day the weeks, the months, and years to come. One, two, three.
three, four, and five wide away. Okay, so this is just very small snippet. I usually go into it a lot deeper and relax every part of the body. However, we all look calmer. <laughs> but we don't do this for myself and for ourselves. And even Bob mentioned it this morning. Take a few minutes in the morning to meditate. What he's really saying it is what I'm saying is when you do that, when you're taking that time, we're not reactionary within the subconscious mind. We are consciously choosing this relaxation moment to work out our problems to, to set our intention for the day and I would always say if you can wake up in the morning and count your blessings because you woke up that morning so it's always nice it's not easy to do I, I forget a lot <laughs> but if you could get into that habit of counting your blessings um, it's going to be hard for you to focus on some negative things that day especially counting your blessings that you got up that morning and you get to be surrounded by the people you love. So I don't know if I'm under or over, but if I if I have a lot of time, I'm happy to answer any I questions. Have a question. So with yes. the, that's called um, umbilic breathing right there when you're breathing from your abdomen. Why do babies breathe umbilically, but then we transfer over to the lungs when we get to that certain age? Because I've been practicing, I do it in this the sauna, I yeah. try to do it in the sauna. It's really hard, especially like sitting up, I've noticed, so I try to lay down when I do it. Yeah. But why is that? So, well, we become stress monsters. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's higher breathing. And women are very known for the shallow breathing. Um, babies aren't. They're not affected by the world in the way we are. They come in pure. They come in, usually, I, I, there's exceptions, but they come in healthy. Their bodies are replenishing every second of every day. And so they just naturally are gonna breathe that way. It's the best way to breathe. It's actually when you're breathing from your abdomen, you're actually being able to clear enough room for your lungs to fill up. And when you do that, you want to push it all the way out because remember, the stuff that we're breathing in is fine, but the stuff we're pushing out is toxic, right? It's toxic to us, so you want to make sure it's. So conscious breathing is important. Babies, they just got it. <laughs> they, they, they have it down. How long do you do it for? Is it is there a, uh, too short or too long or a, like a good medium or does it matter? Can you go like five hours if you really want it? Yeah, well yeah, you can train yourself. Yeah. You can train yourself to, to just naturally breathe that way. And, and it's rare, but I mean, if you if you went to see a yogi, they breathe that, they just breathe that way. Really? It becomes a habit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to go see a yogi. When you What's see a yogi? yogi? Um, it, like in Tibet, they have um, people who are, are practicing that on a daily, uh, a monk or a um, a nun, um, usually in Buddhist religion, um, they're going to be perfecting their breathing and perfecting their meditations, um, and I would say self-hypnosis as well, because there's not a huge difference between a deep meditation and a hypnosis. I usually keep that quiet, but we're amongst friends, so. Well, breathing it, um, is, they do, there's a lot of breathing practice in yoga and things like that. And um, I have found and believe that when you can focus on the breath, it brings you into the moment, which is incredibly important too. So it's kind of like a two Yeah, <laughs> remember, the consciousness is what we would like to be a little bit more aware of um, because on an unconscious level, all kinds of stuff is going on. But if you can be in consciousness, um, then you'll be at the top of the game of about 99.9% .9 of the population. We're all on autopilot. Is there any way to like take like you know take some of the subcontract subconsciousness and put it into your consciousness? Can you get that yeah. gap to grow down? Yeah, I believe through hypnosis, mm -hmm. and it's not that you are taking away the subconscious reactions because subconsciousness is habits, and we're kind of kind of need that. We need to get into a car and know how to drive it without thinking, get home without thinking, um, but. Yeah, but the way you can do it is through practice, um, but through choices also. So you can reprogram the unconscious mind. Uh, the stuff that you don't want, add in the stuff that you do want. Um, 
and because I'm working with people right now who are just doing a, a clinic for people for smoking and vaping, I'm going in and replacing that habit with a more positive habit and a better way of thinking about it. And they're always amazed that it's happening so fast. I'm not. It, it's fast and it's effective, but it's taking control of it rather than letting advertisers, politicians, negative people around us are doing it to us all of day long. Mm -hmm. It's taking control of it. So I have a, a question. I've done a lot of work with things about <clears throat> trying to be aware of what, when you feel a negative feeling, like in, and learning to identify where that's coming from in your body, um, and if you learn to identify it quickly, then you can you can hear the voice of what was just what you were just telling yourself that made you feel that way. Um, and bringing awareness to that is incredibly important. Um, do you do work around that? Yeah. And I would almost say that it starts more in the mind yes. and then goes to the body. Um, so negative thoughts throughout the day. What I always and, and, and believe me, it's hard. It's, since I've been doing this, I've gotten better even. Um, but when you have a negative thought, if this is a consciousness thing again, when you have a negative thought, because that can be unconscious, to consciously look at it. Look at it, you're the observer. We have this ability, I believe in the soul and, and the spirit. Um, we have this ability to look at what we're thinking. We're the only animal on earth that we know of that can do this, to actually look at our own thoughts. Look at those thoughts and change them. It's, I know it sounds like I'm saying it's easy, it's not. But look at it, I, I, I'm thinking about something that's going wrong today, my bank account, whatever. No, I'm gonna choose a different, a different thought. I'm gonna choose abundance. So I'm gonna change that negative into something positive. And once you're doing that over and over again in your life, being conscious of it, it starts to become a habit. And you notice that things start coming to you, flowing to you. Um, I, I'm a big prayer. I like prayer. I think that that's a good way to get to that. Um, meditation. And then, of course, I think hypnosis is a quick way to get to it. Um, I, that, I don't know why that just reminded me. I did this guided visualization yesterday that was, um, <clears throat> you know, you see somebody smiling at you, so you visualize that. And then you actually see yourself <laughs> smiling at you, at yourself. And just the feeling that <clears throat> visualizing that that came up was so much more intense and then brought the smile into your body for healing and mm -hmm. chakras and different stuff like that it was so she kind of brought up a really good point so our, our brain i know i'm going over i apologize but our brain and this is all fairly new uh, neuroscience but our brain has cells they're called mirror neurons and this is the cool, I'm sorry, I'll geek out on this, but this is the coolest thing. So these mirror neurons in our brain will actually tell us whatever we think, feel, as we're closing our eyes and thinking about something, our brain has no idea that it didn't happen. Our brain thinks it did happen. So this is really cool. This is some, a tool that we can use. Um, there was a study, I think it was at Chicago, Illinois, I told you about this. There was a study, um, a psychologist and a coach got together, they split their team into three different teams. Um, one was actually practicing for many hours a day, shooting hoops, perfecting their hoop shooting. Next group was only visualizing it for many hours a day. Feeling it, this is the key. Getting in your body, feeling the fact that you jumped, smelling the smells of the court, hearing the sound of it going through the hoop, okay? Then the third group, got time off for a month, they didn't do anything. So what they found is the group that practiced, they improved by 24%, I think it was 24, 25. 24 or 25% they improved. That's huge for a king, right? And then the group that visualized, 23%. They didn't do anything except with their mind and they improved 23%. Of course, the group that did nothing, that, there was no improvement. In fact, it was a little decline. Um, but that's almost the same. That's because we have neuron, neurons that, um, mirror neurons, that we can actually think about something, our body, and our body will react, and our mind actually believes that it happened. Our heart's different. Our heart actually does have brain neurons as well. Um, that's more true. Brain can lie. Heart can't. At least we don't think so. 
Um, so, so if you want something, visualize it, but feel it in every way. See what you want to see. I like to have people stand in front of a mirror and look at themselves and see what they want. If it's a healing, if it's a, a, a losing weight, it, it, whatever it is, but see it, feel it, smell it, touch it, get all the senses involved, and that has more power. The more senses you have, the more power. That's one thing that we can do in visualization or hypnosis is I can actually go, okay, now smell it. I worked with a gal yesterday. She's going to go into a family reunion. She's very nervous about it because she has some conflict with somebody. I had her stand in front of that person, smell her perfume, notice her hair, notice her face, um, maybe put an arm on her. And she came out and she's like, it went really well. I'm like, yeah, it did. <laughs> it will. It did. So it works. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Thank you.